the angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to oh, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the intentions of Tina Spiniello. We pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. After a while, the wadi where Elijah was hiding dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, 
The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, Lord let, let your face shine on us. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Lord, Lord let your face shine on us. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Lord, let your face shine on us. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when the grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your light shine before all, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. We praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to read from 1 Kings. As the drought predicted by Elijah continues, he is sent to the widow of Zarephath in Sidon, which is located in the area of the pagan Baal worship. Even here, the drought has catastrophic effects. The widow and her ailing son were down to their last handful of flour and their final jar of oil, which she chooses to share with Elijah. For this famous act of kindness shown a prophet, she is rewarded by the God of Israel with a miraculous supply of food, as well as the restoration of her son to health. The Gospels and the early church saw a deep Eucharistic background in this episode. The scene matches the impotence of the pagan fertility god even among their followers with the power of the God of Israel towards someone who is not even an Israelite. God recognizes the light of people even in pagan lands. The Gospel relates that we are to be a light in the darkness. 
By our words as well as our presence, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we stand for an alternative value system, as did Elijah. We remind the world of the presence of our God in day-to-day -day life, just as Elijah made the God of Israel known to the pagan woman, we make our Lord known by what we say and what we do, staying focused on the God of Israel, staying focused on Jesus Christ. It is incredibly important that as things begin to slowly open up, we continue to evangelize not only our fellow Catholics, but also others, people who may have left the faith, people who may no longer be interested in our faith. And so we've been trying to give you alternatives. So for example, the Chosen series that we are watching Sunday evenings. I don't impress very easily uh, by evangelization tools like the Chosen series. However, in this case, it is impressive, and the quality and the thought put behind it, and the sensitivity of it to Scripture is most impressive. The cinematography, most impressive. The dialogue, the idea of expanding the disciples' stories so that we watch them being chosen. That's the whole basis of the title, Chosen. It is important to use these types of tools to evangelize. You may not want to talk to people you know about the Bible. You may not want to talk to people you know uh, about Jesus Christ. Or you may not want to invite them to Mass or use the word Catholic. Fine. Invite them to watch a video series. It couldn't be simpler than that. You do it for the other videos that you're watching on Netflix, Google Prime. You tell people, I saw this, it's really good, you might want to check it out. That's all you have to do. It's that simple. And you're guiding them, leading them. You're planting a seed that God the Holy Spirit can allow to grow. But you have to plant the seed. God the Holy Spirit will make it grow, but the expectation is on us to be a light in the darkness, to plant that seed, to ultimately recognize the hunger they have for love, real love, not fake love, not worldly love, real love that only Jesus can satisfy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, it is an incredible act of selfishness to keep the faith to ourselves. It is an incredible act of selfishness if Elijah were to have kept his good news only for his own people. He went out. And again, it is important that we do this, that we keep it in our minds, what it means to be a light in the darkness. Because unfortunately, many Catholics have turned that message secular, and I've mentioned this to you many times, using the word nice. People today believe that we are a light in the darkness if we are nice to one another. That is in no way, shape, or form where the bar is set for us as disciples of Jesus Christ. It may be where the Canadian bar, even the Canadian Catholic bar, is set at let's be nice, do acts of kindness. And I've said many times to people, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, they do acts of kindness, but they do it for the person. We do it for our Lord. That is what distinguishes us from them. He is the source of our light. We only reflect the light. I've said this many times to people, like the moon in the sky. We are expected to reflect His light, not our own light, not the light of human nature, not the light of our human will, 
not the light of this world, his light. That is what distinguishes us from them. That is important to keep in mind as I'm making simple requests like invite people you know, Catholics, not Catholics, practicing, not practicing, atheists, people of other faiths, to watch Chosen on Sunday night. We are having a Zoom meeting afterwards, and Deacon Neil, myself, and Vlad are part of that. And again, it will bear fruit, but it will only bear fruit if you plant the seed. Because I don't know your friends, I don't know your co-workers, I don't know your family members. You do. So again, please note what it means to be a light in the darkness. Please note what it means to be like Elijah, to spread the word of God to others that may really not know any of this. It is important that we take advantage of this time of COVID. People are upset. People are irritated. They're looking for answers. They're looking for peace. As you see all this turmoil happening across the world. People are looking for answers. People are looking for peace. We have the source of light, Jesus Christ. He is the source of light. By the power of the Holy Spirit, peace can come. But it requires us to go deep into our faith, not superficial, nice, pleasant, kind, acts of kindness, I hear these things, and it bothers me when they come out, out of mouths of disciples of Jesus Christ, because the bar is low. Our bar is much higher. So again, I push you, I challenge you. I'm not asking a lot. Challenge people. Watch it yourself first, obviously. See what you think of the Chosen series. Just YouTube, chosen, and they'll come up. Again, important that we use these evangelization tools to plant the seeds, to be a light in the darkness. Then the Holy Spirit will water them and make them grow. God bless you. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Tom Collins, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, in a special way, John, Philomena Carrera, Maria Reyes. And to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom and the power and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am unworthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, fill me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray one Hail Mary for all who are sick and for those who care for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ.